everyone! Here today to wrap up all of the books that I read in February. Now, if you saw my recent Friday Reads, you'll know that this is coming to you over two weeks late because I have been really lacking in motivation. And part of that was because nothing I read in February really stood out to me. I didn't, I didn't love anything that I read in February, and the monotony of reading fine book after fine book after fine book kind of crushed my reading spirit, and I'm trying to find it again. Haven't quite yet, but still working on it. I figured it was so worthwhile to talk about the things that I read in February, because n most of these books weren't bad. I just didn't really, really love them. I didn't find anything to be particularly remarkable about most of the things, so it just got a little bit monotonous. So the first thing that I read in February was actually really promising. It was Home by Nnedi Okorafor. It is the sequel to Binti, which I really, really enjoyed. Both of them are novellas, so they're only 80 or 90 pages long each. There are supposed to be three in this series, the third one has yet to come out, and I had pre-ordered Home because I loved Binti so much and could not wait to see where it went. Um, now, for some reason, despite the title, I assumed that Home would address things that happened in the immediate aftermath of Binti, particularly at the university that Binti was to attend. I'm trying to speak in really vague terms here. However, it actually is about Binti and her relationship to her home and her family, and that is really what the story is about. So if you feel like you didn't get enough out of Binti, um, that it didn't go far enough, the world wasn't developed enough, and the characters just didn't have the space to develop because it was so short, then I would definitely give Home a chance because I find the series to be really interesting. I don't quite understand why it's not just a novel, why the three parts aren't just combined, but they're not, so hopefully we'll be able to read the third and last installment in the series sometime next year, but I would definitely recommend both Binti and Home. And they're really short, so if you're looking for something that is sci-fi and easy, but also thought-provoking and by a woman of color, I mean, you cannot go wrong with this series. What I read immediately after Home was a book that I was very eagerly anticipating, and it was Night Waking by Sarah Moss. This book isn't bad. There is nothing fundamentally wrong with this. A lot of it I found to be quite interesting. But when you look at it in the shadow of The Title Zone, which was one of my favorite books last year, also by Sarah Moss, this just doesn't compare. In reading Night Waking, it was quite clear that this had been written earlier in Sarah Moss's career because it just didn't seem as accomplished in, in theme or writing the way that The Title Zone was. This is a story from the perspective of a mother who is an academic, and she and her husband and two young children have moved to a rural town, a house from her her husband's family, there to kind of get away from the city and live there for a while, kind of removed from society. Very few people live on this island. Our protagonist, Anna, is trying to finish her academic work while also taking care of the children, because the relationship dynamic between her and her husband is very heteronormative, very typical. She is expected to do most of the child rearing, which she thinks is quite unfair because while her husband is working, so is she. Why does she have to bear the brunt of more of the work? And that is an idea that I can really get behind. The things that I enjoyed the most about this were Anna's thought processes and how she really struggles to reconcile her feelings about her children and her husband because there's a lot of resentment there. There's a lot of struggle and it really highlights the terrible aspects of motherhood. It's not you know, just like nice newborn smell and lots of cuddles. It's like lots of bodily fluids and waking up in the middle of the night and being so tired that you just want to cry or strangle somebody. And her husband not being able to understand how difficult the task of raising the children is. He, stereotypically, may be able to take care of them for an afternoon, but he does not understand how difficult it is to take care of them full time while also trying to work. And Anna feels really challenged by her desire to be academically and professionally successful while also take care of her children, who she does love. And those things I all thought were very thematically interesting. This is one of those books that's very much about the characters and their experiences and not so much about Plot. Not very much happens. I don't really even want to mention what goes on in the main thrust of the plot because it takes quite a bit of time to get going, and I wish I hadn't known it when I went in because um, I, I think it did spoil something for me. So I'm just going to say that that is basically what this book is about, even if there is more stuff going on in terms of plot. And that all is very interesting and good, but I did find it to be a bit monotonous at times. I think it was too long. There were also 
interstitial bits. There were letters from the mid-1800s that I just found to be kind of unnecessary. Eventually you figure out why they're there, and that's fine. I just didn't think that they needed to be there or that they added very much, and every time they came up I just was like, oh, there's another letter. I just didn't like them very much. I cared much more for Anna and her insights, but even those at times felt to me a little bit repetitive. So yeah, I think this book could have been cut down quite a bit, and it, I just don't think it is nearly as accomplished as the title zone in its writing or its themes. So I didn't love it as much, but that doesn't make it a bad book. It just wasn't my favorite. The next three books I want to talk about were all Book of the Month Club picks. While I only actually got one from Book of the Month Club itself, I was intrigued by two of the other books from the month and ended up listening to them on audio. So the first one that I listened to was Behind Her Eyes by Sarah Pinborough. This is set up to be kind of a typical thriller. It's about a young professional woman who one night hooks up with a guy at a bar and the next day she goes into work to find out that he is her new boss. And that is awkward and embarrassing enough, but soon after that she bumps into a woman who she finds out is that man's wife. And she is trying to balance secret relationships with both of these people, not wanting either of them to know that she knows their spouse or the kind of relationship that she's having. It, it is at times very formulaic, but the thing that I found the most interesting about this were the character dynamics, because not only were my alliances shifting quite frequently, um, I also was very intrigued by how the apparent love triangle kind of seemed to shift, who was trying to, like, seduce who in, in both a friendship capacity and also a romantic capacity. The, the protagonist alliances and who she cared for more were constantly switching back and forth and changing based on new information, so this is definitely a traditional thriller in that there are tons of twists. This is one of those things that is being advertised and marketed based on its ending. The, the general marketing, if you haven't seen it, is that you'll never guess it. And so that, of course, will motivate a lot of people to buy it. Me, myself included, because I usually can guess the ending of those kinds of things. But this is a situation where I couldn't, not because I just didn't see it coming, it's like a thing that is impossible to predict. So I know the ending will make a lot of people really mad, I'd be really eager to hear what you all have to say or, or think of the ending if you've read it, because I don't think it was playing very fair. I did think it was interesting, but... I just can see the construction of it in a way that makes me unhappy, and I'm trying to speak in the vaguest terms possible because obviously the ending is the big, big deal thing of this book. Um, the writing wasn't remarkable, the characters aren't, the relationships aren't. It's totally about the, the plot and the ending. I don't want to ruin it, but I would be curious to hear other people's thoughts. So I thought this book was fine, but nothing amazing, and the ending didn't seem fair. I also listened to The Animators by Kayla Ray Whitaker. This was another Book of the Month Club pick. I was eager to read this because it was slated as this strong female relationship, these two women working in the world of animation and trying to like defeat the odds because animation is such a male-dominated field, and them like struggling together through that. That's not really what this book is about. Yes, the, it's about two women who are friends and they're animators, but it has nothing to do with their struggling to fit in a male-dominated field. That comes up almost not at all. So I don't know why it's being marketed as the struggle, because it's very much about their relationship and their work, but not in that context. It's not framed that way. It's just about them. So I thought it was marketed strangely, and I also just from the get-go didn't really understand their relationship. This is a story completely about friendship but I just didn't get why they were friends, because one of the friends was relatively normal, stable, you know, average person, and one was completely off the rails, kind of awful to everybody and everyone, so I didn't understand the foundation of the relationship, why they would work together, how they, how they worked as friends just didn't make sense to me, because one was so awful and unstable and had been from the start, uh, and I never got it, and I just actively disliked one of the characters so much that it was hard to care about their relationship or what happened because I just didn't care about one of them. It was also interesting because I didn't care very much for the first three or four hours, and then it got really interesting, and it was interesting for a while, and then something happened, and then I stopped caring again. So it was like the middle part was the best, neither the beginning and the ending weren't, which I don't feel like is usually how I view books. Usually a book can start off really strong or end really strong, but this was just best in the middle, and that's not really a good thing to recommend because it takes a lot of work to get there and the payoff is limited. So I don't think I would recommend this. It was pretty largely hyped, but 
I didn't like it very much. Third thing though, my actual book of the month club pick was Pachinko by Min Jin Lee. And this was the other book that I read this month that I actually really enjoyed. Not quite a five star read for me, but a solid four. This is a story of a Korean family starting in the, I think it was like the 1920s, during Japan's annexing of Korea. So Korea is technically under Japanese rule and it's really tough because Japan is at war and, and people in Korea are struggling and poor, but there are rumors that life is better in Japan. So we're following a specific family starting off in Korea and eventually emigrating to Japan and just them struggling being ethnically, ethnically Korean in a Japanese society and, and how they will always be marked as other because they don't fit in with Japan. Japan is a very notoriously xenophobic and somewhat racist nation, you know, being Japanese is best and being anything else is lesser. That's just how they view things. And so it's, it's them trying to fit in, trying to hide who they are. And it just, it was a really interesting story. It starts in the early 20th century and we follow several generations. If you like family sagas, especially ones that really, really dig deep on a handful of characters, I would definitely recommend this. It's kind of the opposite of Homegoing, which gives you a ton of people in a really, really sh condensed way. You only get like 20 or 30 pages with each character. In Pachinko, you get hundreds of pages with just a handful of characters and you really get to know them and you get to see their struggle and how their struggles evolve over the 20th century. It's a really interesting perspective on history because I learned about all of this from the Japanese perspective. So I didn't know a lot of specifics about the Zainichi Korean experience. Uh, Zainichi Koreans are Koreans who live in Japan. It was an interesting thing to, to, to read about, especially the continued discrimination that Korean people face in Japan today, even if they have been living in Japan for generations. There are a lot of people who are, who are from the area of North Korea who don't have the option to return home because of the nature of North Korea being completely closed off. And then you have people from South Korea who won't be considered South Koreans because they've lived in Japan, their families have lived in Japan for so long that they just don't fit in there either and it's like they're in this weird liminal space where they don't really fit anywhere. It's all really really interesting. It's a piece of history that I did study a little bit in college but would love to read more of. And I'm trying to read more fiction by Korean or Korean American authors so I would love recommendations if you have them but this was a really great book. Uh, I would definitely, definitely recommend it. So yeah, I read three other things in February. First being The Circle by Dave Eggers. This was my first Dave Eggers and uh, I honestly am not uh, convinced that I ever need to read anything else by him because I just didn't find this book to be very remarkable. I've had it on my shelf for a couple of years, but I wanted to read this because it's soon becoming a movie starring Emma Watson and Tom Hanks. It is about a giant tech company along the lines of something like Google or Apple, but bigger and, and more pervasive in society. And they kind of permeate every aspect of life and it's focusing on a woman named May. She's in her early 20s and she starts working for The Circle and it's just about her figuring out how to work at this company, how to fit in, how to to work into this very like almost cult mentality of this giant company. And it definitely had a message about the dangers of, of allowing technology to permeate too far into our world. It was frustrating because there was a character who was so against technology, he was at the absolute opposite end of the spectrum and he was like the voice of reason kind of character. And it, he just, he was so far removed from the rest of the mentality of everyone in the story, it just was obvious that he was supposed to be kind of like the moral center of the book um, and the voice that we were supposed to empathize with and listen to because he was the outsider and he was talking about the dangers of technology and it just really felt like Dave Eggers was talking as this character. Didn't like that. I also found it kind of strange that there's, there are pages and pages and pages devoted to May answering her emails. Her job at the circle is like a support kind of person she answers questions from customers and then asks them to review her. And there are just pages and pages and pages of her answering questions and then asking them for a review and they say no and she has to badger them for it. And then they give her, you know, a 99 and she asks them why they didn't get a 100 and then they change their score to a 100 and just this happens a lot. And it just felt like they could have been cut out, honestly. I don't know, I just didn't really like where the plot went. I found it to be quite preachy. And while it was fine, um, I don't think I would recommend this either. I mean, it just was an okay book, but I don't think it was saying anything really remarkable. I thought it was hyperbolic and I thought it was incredibly preachy. So I'm interested to see how the film plays out because obviously they'll be able to cut a lot of that cruft out and just focus on the main plot. And hopefully it's executed better just because I did not like the way this book was written. I also read Under the Skin by Michelle Faber. This is the third Michelle Faber 
book that I've read, and it also I think was his first published novel. This is a weird book, partially because there's a pretty big twist that is kind of central to the whole story and I don't want to give it away, but that means that I don't have very much to talk about here because I don't like giving spoilers. The general premise is that there is a woman who is driving around the Scottish Highlands and she is picking up hitchhikers, very specific hitchhikers. They have to be like men. She will not pick up women, they have to be muscular, they have to be seemingly healthy and somewhat young. So she pulls over, she picks them up. Pretty much all I can say about the plot without getting into it because it takes about, I think about half of the book to really finally understand what's going on. And it is weird, for sure, but I don't, I don't want to spoil it for you. I mean, I clued into what was going on, not the extent of it, not the motive, but the, what was going on and the weirdness of it. I kind of figured out what the thing was pretty early, but I don't want to ruin it for anyone else. I listened to this on audio and it was a pretty enjoyable audiobook. The reading was t at times weird because the, the reader would pause at odd places and I don't know if that was how the book was written or if it was just the interpretation of the reader, but it was a little weird. So I don't know if I would entirely recommend the audiobook. It wasn't unlistenable, obviously I finished it, but it might, might be better to read the physical book. It's not my favorite Michel Faber for sure. In terms of my favorite Michel Faber books, The Book of Strange New Things is definitely still my favorite. Then I would say The Crimson Petal and the White and Unders of the Skin is definitely my least favorite. I haven't really heard much about the other things that he's written other than his collection of short stories based on The Crimson Petal and the White and his poetry collection. Definitely interested in the poetry that I hope to be getting soon, um, but if you've read any of his other stuff I would love to hear whether or not it's worthwhile, how it compares to his other stuff, because these are the big three novels that I hear talked about the most often. He might not even have other novels, I don't know. Let me know if you know more about Michel Faber than I do. And then the last thing that I read in the month was Every Heart a Doorway by Shannon McGuire. My interest in this has, has ebbed and flowed. When it first came out and everyone was reading it, I was really interested. Then I heard Mercedes review it. She did not like it at all. Now I don't remember why, but she hated it. So then I was like, oh, now I don't want to read that. But then recently it was nominated or shortlisted for the nebula something and I was looking through the novellas and I decided I wanted to read a couple of them um, and I started with Every Heart a Doorway. It was only a couple dollars on my Kindle so I picked it up and it was fine. It's a story about all of these children or teenagers and they are sent to a boarding school after returning from their respective fairylands. Sort of like what would happen if the kids from Narnia came back and then weren't able to go back to Narnia, what would they do? They would probably have an existential crisis, as do these children in this story, and so they're sent to this school. Obviously their parents don't believe they were where they said they were, so they think that they're suppressing some sort of trauma, and they believe that this school is supposed to help them overcome that trauma, but really it's designed for these kids who know the truth that they went to these very individualized fairy worlds, magical worlds, they can't figure out how to get back and are crushed by this. They feel like they've lost a piece of their heart. So we're focusing on a group of kids uh, at this school as they're trying to deal with things. It very rapidly becomes a murder mystery. So if that's not interesting to you, then sorry. Um, it was fine. I. I know that there are going to be sequels, but I don't really know where they would go. I don't really need any more of this world. It was what it was. I applaud it for having a trans character, and, and you know, I think it was doing some sort of interesting things, but I just didn't have a lot of time to grow really attached to these characters. It was very focused on the murder mystery, so that kind of overwhelmed any of the cool thematic exploration that I think could have been done. It didn't go where I like, would have liked it to, it didn't really work for me, but not everything will, so that's fine. Anyway, those are all the things I read in February. Sorry that I didn't really have a lot to recommend because most of what I read was kind of just okay, but that's fine. I'm hoping that March is better. It is like halfway over and I haven't really read anything great yet. I haven't really finished anything yet, but there's still time. I hope it will be better. I did want to ask a question. On that short list of, of novellas, I tried to read Kaya Shante Wilson's work, Sorcerers of the Wild Deeps. And I read the first page and I did not understand any of it. Am I supposed to not understand? Was it just like a problem with my brain? Does it get better? Does it get more comprehensible? Because I was really, really confused and I didn't like it. But I own it now, so if it's worth pursuing, which I know Elizabeth from Books and Pieces will say it is, I would love to hear why it's worth pursuing because I just was like, 
really, really lost. Anyway, that's one thing that I just wanted to throw in there because I was confused. And now I'm gonna go try and probably read something. I would like to have at least something to talk about at the end of March. Let me know your thoughts on any of these books that I mentioned in this video. Um, feel free to disagree with me if you loved or really, really, viscerally hated any of these things. Uh, I would love to have a discussion with you in the comments. And other than that, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.